In this video I will talk about understanding plot window behavior, how to find a tag's bitstream period, how to determine a tag's modulation. Hello and welcome! You know me as Iceman from the Proxmoor Forum, as one of the administrators. I also have a popular fork which you might have heard of. It's called the Iceman Fork. Today I have been invited by Lab 401 Academy to do a series of tutorials on how to use a Proxmoc device. Let's get started. Start up your uh, Proxmoc client and get your data plot window out. Get the overlays window out of the side because we don't need it. I've put on a tag, LF tag, over my LF antenna and uh, we collect some data from it. So, in understanding the data plot window behavior, I will now show you some tricks that you will be needing when you're analyzing the signal data. First of all, you have uh, help texts connected with the data plot window. And normally you see the help text inside the client um, window, but you can actually get a help text if you select the plate plot window and press H. You see it comes here in the client, comes out all the help text, what you can do. It also takes away the uh, prompt, but if you select it and press enter, you get it back again. Leave it to work. How to find a tag's bitstream period. First of all, we read the signal from the tag and we see it in the plot window and we try to determine how long it is. We use a command called autocorrelate which uh, correlates the repeating patterns. It's a, it's a function to finding a repeating patterns in a signal. You call it with data autocor. You need to put a specifier of a window size. 2000 is a good one. And you see it says it found a possible correlation of 1496 samples. If I add a G option to the command, it will actually change plot window and the graph to show what it found. Now, if you select left click and you right click, you measure out you know, those two peaks in the grid. You zoom in, see that you really got it. Yeah, and then you go to the next one. Zoom up a little bit faster. That looks dead on. And you see the distance down here is 1496. So that's what you see in, in this layout collations. So this is the repeating signal. It's 1496 in length. 1496 samples, data samples. One sample, as you see in this plot here, is one out of 125 kilohertz. 125 kilohertz per second is one divided by 125,000, which gives you eight microseconds. So one sample you see in a normal read is eight sample at a rate at eight microseconds. And what you're looking at is the amplitude from the left going to the right in the time dimension. It's good to know for all of your mathematics out there. Next step is to determine the clock. How often or how long is the clock rate for this signal, for this card? Since autocorrelator has been screwing up the signal, we need to recollect one. And we will use data detect clock. You have to specify which kind of modulation the clock is in the, in the graph buffer. Uh, this happens to be an Ask One Manchester, so I will put in A. And it gives you a suggestion of 64. If you zoom in, you see the grid lines are there. And if you see it here, 
and use the L command to lock it up. You see how it matches up the grid lines with a peak and a low. Nice wave here. Now some high to low, high to low. 64 samples. And you see a sample is every of those little dots there at my 8 microseconds is one bit. Actually, it's two bits because it's Manchester. Um, but yeah, basically. However, um, this gives you, together we will have before, we got the length of the signal repeating pattern was 4096. And the clock rate for one bit is 64. So we divide 4096 with 64. That will give us 64 bits. Yes, we do math. And 64 bits divided by 8, 8 bits per, per byte, will give you 8 bytes. Voila. So what we're looking for is a data pattern of 8 bytes. How to determine a tag's modulation type. For this, we're gonna take use of the traces folder in your client and, and load up some sample traces. So you can see the differences between the different modulation types, ASK, FSK, and PSK. Remember when you see all this signal data is that it's a wave form that going through time. And if you remember the sine curves of uh, uh, from maths in school, you uh, you can see how it's you know where on the curve it is or in the circle that goes outwards or inwards when you look at it. It will help you understand the, the difference of uh, the modulation types. So data load traces window modulation ASK. We load an ASK first, Manchester in bits. And for two clocks, here we go. First of all, you see the data trace window here. It's a max minimum, it's a very strong signal, it's maxed out. And even if we zoom out, you see it's kind of typically like this. It's um, signal goes up and down. Remember the sign curves? How, how you, you imagine yourself that this is going around a circle or in time dimension now when you look at it. Um, kind of distinct in that sense. This is a strong signal, so you can see it maxed up with the flat tops. Looking at an FSK um, signal, um, we look at 2A. It will look completely differently. Uh, we zoom it out and you see it looks like this. This is so, when you see something like that, you know it's FSK. And when you look at frequency shifting, it means that it goes faster or slower in the frequency uh, in these turns, in the spikes. In a clock uh, period, um, imagine we said that a bit period was uh, 50 samples. And with FSK, you can actually just look at the amount of tops and uh, tips going in one of those uh, clocks. And if we look at PSK, where I have 40, 40, 60, 61. Let's try this one. This is very distinct for PSK tag. So you see, if it comes down to having the plot window is very helpful because you see the differences in the signal and by it you can make your determining of it. Phase shifting signals is remember that you you know how the signal goes along in the time dimension and when you want to signal a bit change it skips 90 degrees in the phase of the signal leading to this jumps as you see. And every time there's a jump, there is a change in the bit pattern. So the clock goes here, here, and here. 
and it keeps having the same clo uh, bits as it was from the last change. So every swap either is upwards or downwards, doesn't matter where the face is, it just indicates that it, it swaps from uh, from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. And when it doesn't do it, if no swap is detected, it keeps the same bit as it has detected from here. That's face shifting key. To help you out with this, the Proxmo client has this command called data raw. Or data raw we call it, but it's called actually data raw dmod. And you see it can demodulate a few of them. And if we take and load in the Askman uh, trace again, you see how it looks different. We uh, data raw. We know it can ask Manchester. You can put the age for help afterwards and see what more options do you have. You can apply the clock on it, but you don't have to do it. It will detect it automatically. So we load this trace in and we run AM for it. And you can see this is how we see how the clock is and how the, uh, how the demodulation of the data is also when you look at this. It's kind of useful in that sense you know, of, of looking at things. Uh, finding the start place where you do all this is um, in the signal where to start decoding the model. It means that we have to have an offset when you try to deter uh, determine what is the actual data that is being sent. But that's an, another story. Uh, but the important thing is here to be able to identify which kind of modulation is and then help uh, using the data raw command to demodulate it to bits. Want to do. If you run uh, FS on this, it will not help, it will not show anything, not, neither do this uh, phase shifting duplication on it, this says it doesn't help. And if we load in the FSK and we do we try um, Manchester decoding on it, it doesn't work. If we try the phase shifting, it doesn't work, but if we do FS, it will try it. We loaded a FSK 2A 50, the clock is 50 and 2A is a version of it and it found 50, high and low, however it did not find that it was A indicates so that it's an inverted stream and it didn't find it automatically, it found an FSK 2 signal. You can see when you look at FSK signals and there's too many ones in it, More there's abundantly more ones than zeros in the decode the demodulated bit patterns then it's usually wrong and then you have to um, let's see we have to invert it usually just in gate we won and now it finds the FSK 2A which is the one we loaded and here you see the bit patterns which is um, hidden inside the signal same goes if we load up the phase shifting uh, signal we try to demodel it with FS. It finds something, but it's so many ones in here, so it's, you know, it's crap. <laughs> AM doesn't find anything. P1 gives a decent bitstream, which you see if you look for other bitstreams with the same data in it, actually. Mm. Which Bible looks at it, looks like it is one, two, four. Uh, which is the next step you want to do is see what is it hidden inside of here where you can use the data print which you use prints the bits and if you add the parameter x it prints the, the hexabytes of it and if you look at this signal you can see it sends a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 okay that's kind of fun and if you load in the other trace We demodulate it. We want to invert it. We want to print the X. You see it comes down to 0, 1, 0, 2. There's some folds here. You see it's an 8. And this is uh, usually what we call the offset uh, problem. We don't know where the offset is. So the print command has a X offset 1. Use the O 
command in to get an offset in the bitstream and to say where to start deciphering it and here all of a sudden we see the same number as the previous data. So all this modulation uh, traces uses the same data inside it. Let's go up to VASC and do the same for that one. We load it up and we look at the data raw command. It gives you this. We look at the print. I'll use the offset one. That worked. See if you can do it without. Didn't work. Offset one worked. And you see we get this out. So this is how you determine the tag modulation and how to decipher its raw hex values and how you use a client for it. Exercises. It's time to practice what you learned. Uh, you will see on the window on the screen right now a list of suggested exercises that I think will be helpful for you to understand more what you've done and to repeat it. Here are some tips for you. When you use the plot window, take a deep look on the values, max values of the, the grid. This goes between 150 and 50. Now the collected say a signal in the device is an unsigned integer which runs from 0 to 255. But once it gets to the client, it becomes a signed integer and it goes from negative 127 to 128. So this data here maximum is 127 and lowest is 127 will give you that this is a very strong signal because it maxes out. The difference between a weak signal and a strong signal looks like this. If I take a rubber tag I do LF read I will make sure oh actually I will move the signal. It's usual card and I will move it away from antenna to make it weaker. You zoom out, you see immediately that this is not the strong signal anymore, it goes to 96, it's the same card but with larger distance. And all of a sudden the signal becomes weaker. And I want to put the tag back again and read it. You see that the signal maxes out on the, on the collected value from ADC. So normally you see these flat tops that would be an indication of a very strong signal and the signal actually goes continues up here like a waveform like you saw for the weak one but we can't measure it we max this out on it so it becomes a flat line instead. Time to recap. You and I are able to 1. Understand the plot window behavior 2. Find a tag's bitstream period and 3. Determine a tag's modulation type and get the raw hex values out. Hey guys, this is Fabrice from lab41.com. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, make sure to like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. And last but not least, visit lab41.com to get the best price on the best gaming pen testing tools, and of course, where you can find updates about our new tutorials. And remember that at Lab41, pen testing is our career. Cheers, guys. See you next time.